Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another review. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. And I'm Roy Kennedy. Today we're going to be taking a look at this tiny little game called Dandelions. This is from BoardGameTables.com. And it is a, a roll and move game in which you roll a pool of 11 dice at the beginning and then move around and try to control different areas. Before we get too much farther into it, let me mention two things. This is a reprint of a previous game, uh, Japanese little, very tiny production called Birth, which technically I've reviewed already, so I'm sort of re-reviewing this. And secondly, I'm gonna stop talking and show you how the game works. We'll be right back. To set up the game, we are going to place the five garden boards here in ascending order, numerically, around like so, and we'll have uh, two or three players placing their pieces here in player order. So player one will be yellow, player two, player three. Every player gets 11 dice, and you will roll all of those once at the beginning of the game. So, for example, the yellow player's got that, green player would do the same thing, and then the orange player would do the same thing, and you are ready to begin with the first player, in this case, the yellow player. So on your turn, you are going to select the die, and you are going to move your pawn that many spaces clockwise around these spots here. Landing also and counting occupied spaces. So, for example, if I were to do this three right here, the yellow pawn would go one, two, and then three into this empty space. Once you are done, you are going to, if you land in an empty space like that, take the die you chose to move with and leave it in that location. That's the general flow of the turns, and every player is going to have 11 turns in the game for their 11 dice. A couple of complications on top of that. If you select a die, such as this two, that would land you on another pawn, like in this case one, two. Once you are done moving, if you land on another one, you will move that many spaces again. So another one, two, into this space here, and then leave my die in that location. If when you move, and for this I will need to uh, have a couple of things happen first. So let's say uh, that player indeed did that two, then orange is going to go, orange is going to go four, one, two, three, four, land there. Green is going to go, and green is going to go with a three, going one, two, landing on this one for three, so another three, one, two, three, into this location, and landing there. Uh, then let's go back to yellow. Let's say yellow picks this two right here, or rather, let's uh, go with yellow picks three. This three right here. They'll go one, two, three. Once you place a die into a garden, if any of your opponent's dice show the same number as the die you just introduced, you need to move all of those dice to one neighboring uh, garden here. So I could, for example, take this die here that matches the three I just added and push it over to this garden. So that's all of the placement rules, the jumping and, and moving again rules, and then the pushing players off of the garden which you just landed, all right? So that's all the movement rules. The only thing I haven't talked about when it comes to all of this going on is if you ever land on this spot right here, you will take all of the dice you have left and re-roll them once just like you did at the beginning of the game. So let's talk about scoring and how scoring works out. There are two things you'll be scoring for. You'll add the totals together for that and see who the winner is. So you've got the sprout scoring right here and the seed scoring right here. So the top one, uh, the players will not fight each other for that. It's very simple. Every die that you have in a garden, the pips do not matter, is going to give you a number of points equal to the value of that garden. So for example, if the yellow player has three dice here, each one is worth five points. So they would score 15 in that garden, in this location right here. 15 points for the five garden. The second scoring, and then you'll, you'll add up your totals for that over here on this side. The second scoring, the seed scoring, you are competing with each other. So let's go ahead and put out some more dice so that I can explain the way this works out. So let's say, for instance, well, I'm just going to focus on these two for my example here. If you have, uh, for the seed scoring, taking a look at the five here, 
The player who will score points for that in each of the gardens is whoever has majority, and majority is the number of dice. So yellow here has three dice, uh, orange has none, and green has two, so yellow will score this one, and the number of points they get is the pips on their dice uh, summed up. So in this case, five uh, points for the yellow player in this garden here. So they're going to write down a five there. If there is a tie for such a thing, so for example, looking at this garden here, yellow has one die, green has three, orange has three, then you will check the pips, and whoever has the lowest total, that's the player who wins this majority race. So in this case, green has seven, the orange player has a total of five pips, so orange will score uh, the total, which is five in that one. So there go a five, and then if it is a perfect tie, say they had seven, and this player had seven, then they both will score. You will add up the sums for both of these, write down your total score down here, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. All right, so there you go. That's the overview. That's how the game works. Uh, as I said, I've already kind of talked about it, so I'll mention some of the differences, sort of my new thoughts on this hmm. one. But let's go to you guys first. Mm -hmm. What did you think of it? Um, when I first set it up, there's really not much to it. Right. What were your sort of first initial impressions? I thought it was extremely simple. Like I, I mean, the rules are extremely easy to grasp. Mm -hmm. It's like an easy game to throw on the table. It's like super simple area control. I like the little bit of the. I mean, there's not a whole lot of theme here. It's very abstract overall. But yes. you do have the dandy lines kind of like floating around, and like when you land on other ones, and they spread the other players' things to other areas. I mean, it's kind of cute how all of that comes together in like a super simple game. Yeah, cute's a good word for it. Yeah, I think cute's right. When you first set it out, I liked how streamlined and how. I mean, dandy lines are very simple, right? I mean, they're just done mm. with a little puffball on top, and it kind of had that feeling to it. It's very streamlined, very simple. But then, unfortunately, I think as you're explaining the game, I saw that kind of disappear yeah, in the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. this has nothing to do with dandelions. Has yeah, to do with it's rolling dice and moving. Fully, <laughs> like, yes. fully abstract. Very abstract. <laughs> with a theme now, it used to be about the birth of the universe or something. Oh, wow. It was called birth, and it was fully yeah. abstract. Mm. Now they've tried. This one has artwork. That original game really had, like, nothing. Colors, basically. Mm. Um, okay. So this is a little better from that point of view. Um, I'll say, I think for me, comparing this to the original one, I think it's gained some interest in packaging. This is smaller and it doesn't need to be that big. And it is much prettier. Um, I like the dice in it, I like the wooden pillars, they're, they're a nice touch, they look good. I like that the tiles are individual tiles now, they're easy to set up. It used to be a player, uh, a paper mat that oh, you'd fold out okay. oh, wow. with this wheel with the numbers. So I think that's better. The yeah. game looks better. I think it's lost something, though. I know it's lost something because the original one came with different paper mats. Oh, with different setups where the numbers were not oh. always in the same sequence. Oh, and I'm sort of I'm very flabbergasted by the fact that you, they can do that even more easily now mm -hmm. that they're tiles. Yeah, but it's not in the rule book. This is the only way to set this up is with the numbers in sequence, where I know for a fact alternate setups existed, but they're oh. not in here? Why would you not add that in here? Give me a variant that says, also after you've played a few times, shuffle them up, right. or try this alternate setup. I was or also surprised that it wasn't double-sided, like the different tokens where you're going around weren't like, yeah. right. like they have different number of spaces on the different right. sides, it's very yeah. interesting. Or have like different tokens that you could cover so there's different values, you know, it's not the same five prescribed values. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just a yeah, lot of different just, ways you could do it is what we're trying to it's say. It's two sides, <laughs> Yeah. if I'm not mistaken, they are the same side on every one of these. Yeah. And there's no good reason for them to be printed on they both sides. They could have sides. added some replayability in there just by adding slightly different numbers with slightly different spaces to go on, you know? I agree. Yeah. I agree. And that's probably something I will personally do just because I know it can be done and I've done it in the past. But it's not in here. Mm -hmm. Anyone else would just assume that this is the only way to play. Hmm. And that seems weird to me. You're leaving gameplay on the floor when you could have added three lines of text to this, and now your game is immediately has more life in it. Right. I don't understand that. But it's interesting because it sounds like that's something they took out because you said there was that in the original. So it's interesting that that was a decision made. 
to remove. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, simplicity's sake, maybe the game is dead simple. Hmm. And I think it would work well for someone who is a non-gamer to, you know, it's a little stocking stuffer. Great for that, you know. Yeah. Uh, someone who's used to roll and move games. That's sort of their, you know, that that's their experience with board gaming. This is a pretty different roll and move game. It yeah. is. You're I, comparing it to just that, right? I will say, as a roll and move, I really liked the the mechanism where you roll all the dice and that is your pool. There is one spot if you happen to stop on that exact spot where you can re-roll your dice. Mm. But that's in my place. That's not happened to me yet. I think I've seen it happen once in the plays. You yeah. know, amongst all the characters, or not characters. We're not characters. We are people, players. There it humans. is. Humans. Humans. The Dandelions. humans did it Puffs. once. Um, you know, but I, I love that idea that it is the roll and move, but you still have that agency of when I'm going to move, how much, and you just see your like pool depleting rather than each time, I hope I can get that four, I hope I can get it, you know. No, you see what you have and you can map it out, um, and really the only difference is if somebody else is on that spot and then oh, double, so hold on, let me readjust. Mm -hmm. I really like the roll and move with that, I'll use air quote, full information up front. I would yeah. agree with that, but then there's also like a decent amount of interaction where you just stop on other people's spaces and then push their people out of there. And a lot of times I would stop and I wouldn't necessarily, I was trying to figure out how to be strategic about it, but a lot mm -hmm. of times I'd just be like, oh, I did a four. I have to move a four out of here. I know that happened to you a bunch of times. You're like, oh, well, you got to move that four out of there even though you weren't necessarily planning. And it's like, oh, well, if I do yeah. it here, it's going to mess me up. If I do it there, it might mess me up. So you might end up like, doing plays that aren't necessarily in your best interest just because you have to because of where you played mm -hmm. and where you landed. And maybe that's just not seeing the patterns as well as I could. But like it felt very like nebulous. Like, I think every time I was playing this game, I was like, I have no clue who's winning this game currently. It's <laughs> yeah. very yeah, nebulous yeah. to yeah. me. I think maybe that's why it didn't bother me because I just never thought about that. Like I yeah. know it's very simple and there are very few rules, but it still felt very much like, okay, there's two ways to score, but also there's these my movement, but also moving the dice. They're all very simple things, mm -hmm. but it was just, to think and plan, I could definitely have gotten stuck in like that AP, you know, mm. where it's like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna move? And I've, is it better to move them? And then that gives them this there, that gives it. No, it was like, all right, I'm gonna move there. Oh, mm. I have to move that four? Cool. It's like, I focused more on, let me focus on these two ways I score. Right. And less about how I'm gonna move other people and how that, you know right. what I mean? So it's like, I just kind of completely ignored that strategy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there is um, something there. I mean, you could try to manipulate other people's dice too, so that they are second in other places instead of having, instead of having majority that they right. are second place yeah. you know send them obviously the obvious move is send them to the lowest tile that's right. that's easy mm -hmm. i did a little but bit of that too i tried to yeah but sometimes sending them to the higher tile keeps them from turning on scoring right mm -hmm. somewhere so that might be a way to go how what did you guys think of control in this game did you feel like you had a lot of control very little control none at all I felt like there was extremely little control i mm -hmm. guess even though we had the things we could pick out i always felt like even if I had like a plan where I'm like, okay, if I do this die and then I do this die and then I do this die, then I can end up on this space. But then sometimes there's just someone else in that space. And mm -hmm. you're just like, well, now I don't have something to stall myself more. So I guess I'm just going to have to skip that. I'm going to land there anyway and then just randomly go over here. So now I'm over here now just because I kind of ran out of dice, you know. Mm -hmm. So just interesting things where the, the game has choices, but then the choices end up kind of seem, feeling more random to me than I would like, I guess. I don't know, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting. Right. I think this is the game that makes you feel like you have control. It, but, I'm sorry, you go in thinking that you're going to have control, but then you get in it and you're like, but I don't. You know, like you roll that first set of dice and then from from there it's like, okay, I can kind of build, all right, I'm going to go with this. Mm. And then again, maybe it's like tweaking on that as, oh, someone's in that spot. Mm. Oh, hold on, now that's a, a, available or this, or I didn't, I'm one number off. You know, so you might be like kind of tweaking as you go, but it really is, um, I felt kind of prescribed, mm -hmm. you know, more, you know, more than I thought. I went in thinking like, oh my gosh, I have, I don't know how many dice, 11. seven, di 11, di 11 dice and 11 turns and I could do this. I mean, you roll the dice, and it's one one of the plays specifically was very clear. As I rolled it, it was like, all right, this is how I'm going to play it out. And then from there, it was just playing out that strategy over the 11 turns. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, you think you have the control, but pretty early on you learn and that you don't really. There's kind of a I do want to mention anyway. that all the games I played were at three players, too. So I wonder mm -hmm. how much yeah. player count affects it. Maybe it's more strategic at two players. Maybe at four players, it just ends up chaotic. Does it, is it just three Four anything? would be a lot is of it bouncing. Three? It's two or three. It's two oh, okay. or three. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so. you're going to run into the same number, obviously, and you need to contend with, with two players that you are then moving a die. Like, when you land there with a four and you move someone, 
you are a, it's more likely you'll turn on scoring for someone else. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, for sure. You know, um, but that's it. They really, I mean, it, it, it's two or three only because gotcha. that's about, it's about the same feel, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. Um, I will say I agree with you guys. It feels like it's a, you have that sense or that, that feeling of control, but you really don't. Yeah. As the game near its, it nears its end, you can then puzzle out a couple of things that you think or you're hoping mm-hmm. will happen. Right, and it's so short that that doesn't bother me too much. Yeah, the game lists fifteen minutes. It's like ten. Yeah, you can right. You know, um, fifteen minutes your first time playing. Yeah, so the game is extremely fast, uh, very tiny. Like I said, yeah, I think uh, we're ready for some final thoughts. I'll go ahead and go first. Actually, I think I. uh, I my, I don't know I don't know where you guys are at with this one. Before actually. you do, do you know where you stood on the original one? I did. I do looked you know? it up. Oh, okay. I rated the original one a six. Okay. So, like I said, this one has gained some things for me: the look, portability, just the new design, and it's lost some things. I'm coming in at the same value on this one, a six. It's more available now, mm. so if you want this, cool. Now it's available to you, and I like it. I find it charming. I think at the end of the day, this is. Ultimately, maybe not a game for Z Garcia the gamer. That's a pretty safe bet. Mm-hmm. But I think if I am teaching people who are non-gamers, if I am showing them the the hobby now, things that you might discover if you've only played roll and move games, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who've only experienced board gaming from basically roll and move games, this is going to A, blow them away considering it's 10 minutes, most roll and move fans are not used to a 10 minute game. They go on and on and on. And it's pretty, and it'll give them things to think about. Is that an illusion of control? Maybe. Mm. Doesn't really matter at that point. So I think that for the target audience for this, I think it's a solid little game. So a six for me. For me, it is a 5.5. Um, I mean, I, I could see someone taking this and throwing it in a backpack and like throwing it out like when they're waiting for like a dinner or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. This is like a quick like little filler game. But for me personally, there's not a whole lot of substance there. It's something that I really want to go back to. I like to have, I guess, a little bit more meaningful choices in the game or just have like a sense of what's going on. I, I think it's light. I think it's cute. But it's not something that I would go back to and play over and over again just because it's so... It's so floaty as it goes along, which makes sense for the theme, but uh, mm-hmm. not not necessarily something that I'm into. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm very similar. I'm coming in at a six as well for this one. Um, I, I think it's it's fine. If somebody pulled mm. it out, sure, I'll play it. I think the fact that it's 10, maybe 15 minutes, you know, if you're really playing slow, um, really helps it, sells yeah. it. But it, to be a 10-minute game and for me to say, but I wouldn't want to play it twice in a row. You know, yeah. and that was kind of the break for me. I think it's just a little too mm. abstract. You know, I'm, I'm so, it's not quite the game for me. I think it's just fine. And if someone pulled it out, sure, I'll give this game ten minutes. I, mm. I, in most situations, I would say yes. You know, mm-hmm. sitting at an airport, like you said, in the book bag. You know, if you're on a hike and as you're resting and doing your lunch or you know whatever something like that, I, I would sure I'll play it for ten minutes on a ten minute break. But it's not one that I would go to. Um, it's just. Bit too abstract for my taste, and again, the fact that there's strategies, and I do think you made an interesting point to play it at two, because I wonder, I'd, like I said, there's that whole strategy that I just ignore. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just don't, even, I don't even think about that because it's just uh, too many moving pieces, I guess, for such a simple short game. Mm. Um, mm. So for, for me personally, just. I think it's funny that you guys are saying like, there's no strategy, there's nothing to do, but also too many moving pieces is kind of a weird. It's not that it's too much strategy. Thing. It's just more like it's too no, much no, not competing. I say it's too much competing. Yeah, yeah, it's too many competing things. Like, okay, do I focus hard on this or this? No, I'd rather go all in on this and just focus on the end game rather than also considering these other things. Yeah, you know, and so it's just not too many moving pieces, I guess, but things that you can easily ignore and still do well. Because I, I, I just find it very tactical, you know. I'm like, oh yeah, I yes, would love is. a four right now, so I can land right there and take majority away. Do I have a four? Yeah. I do. Four. And then, yeah. and if I find myself thinking my pool of dice is terrible right now, do I have one that lands me on the reroll? I do. Reroll. Mm. That's it. I find it breezy. I, I really? would play this twice in a row. Really? And I think mm-hmm. I will just personally shuffle up the tiles and try different things. They that don't say you can do yeah. that, but you know what? Yeah, doesn't that'd be matter. Interesting. So. There you go, everybody. That is Dandelions. Six out of ten. That's the best score at the table. I, it's, a, it's a soft recommend for me. So uh, there you go. 
Dandelions, thank you very much for checking this out. My name is Z Garcia. Camilla Cleghorn. Roy Kennedy. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.